Hello students, in this video we'll derive an infinite product expansion for pi. Let's use the double angle formula over and over and over again. So our double angle formula for sine is going to be that the sine of x is going to be 2 times the sine of x over 2 times the cosine of x over 2. That's the double angle formula, and so I'm going to use this formula over and over and over again. So in particular, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus on this sign over here, and I'm going to write this as 2, and then I'm going to do the double angle formula again. So it's going to be a 2 sine of x over 4 times the cosine of x over 4 times the cosine of x over 2. So in this way, I can do it by induction. So by induction, we have... The relationship that the sine of x is equal to, well, I'm going to have a, I've done this twice, and I have a two twos, I'm going to have a two to the power of n, and then I'm going to have a sine of x over two to the power n, and then I'm going to have a whole bunch of cosine terms. I'm going to have a cosine of x over two, a cosine of x over four, all the way down to the cosine of x over 2 to the power n. So if I do this argument, if I do the double angle formula, that's the double angle formula one time, if I do the double angle formula two times, we can see this pattern develop over here. So that's what we have by induction. And so now I'm going to do is a common trick. So now I'm going to take this. I'm going to write sine of x over x. So sine of x over x times x over 2 to the power n oh, over sine of x over 2 to the power n. So what I've really done over here is I've taken this 2 to the power n sine of x over 2 to the power n, and I've put it in the denominator. So I've divided this over here. So in other words, sine of x divided by this expression is sine of x, and then I have a, that's in the denominator, that's also in the denominator. And then the x and the x are just going to cancel out. So what I really have over here is that this expression is nothing more than just the cosine, cosine of x over 2 times the cosine of x over 4, all the way down to the cosine of x over 2 to the power n. Now, I'd like to let n go to infinity over here. So what happens is n goes to infinity. We can note, so recall, that the sine of x over x tends to 1 as x approaches 0. We know that fact. And so if I can scale this by any number, the same result is true. So that tells me the sine of alpha x over alpha x tends to 1 for any alpha as x goes to 0. Okay. So in particular, what can I say? I can say as n goes to infinity, this expression over here converges to 1 by this relationship over here. So this expression, as n goes to infinity, as n goes to infinity, this expression converges to 1. So what we have over here is we've just proven... That's the sine of x okay. over x is this infinite product, is the product n goes from 1 to infinity. Yeah. Cosine of x over 2 to the power n. So that's an infinite product representation for the sine of x over x. And now I promise you we get a relationship for pi in over here. So what we can say is now I'd like to plug in x equals pi over 2 into this formula. So if we plug in x equals pi over 2, what will we get? If x equals pi over 2 in this formula, well, let's think of what's going to happen to each of these terms over here. So plug in, plug in x equals pi over 2 into this, into this formula. The sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1, so this is going to be a 1 over pi over 2. So that's going to say that 2 over pi is equal to the product of all these cosine terms. So the first term I'm going to get is I'm going to get a cosine of pi over 4. The cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Then I'm going to have the cosine of pi over 8. So how would I find the cosine of pi over 8? Let's remember what the formula was. So the cosine of x over 2, the half-angle formula for cosine, is going to be the square root of 1 plus the cosine of x over 2. That's the half angle formula. So in particular, if I plug in pi over 4 to this, I can conclude that the cosine of pi over 8, for example, will be equal to the square root of 1 plus root 2 over 2 over 2. 
And so what that looks like is if I simplify this, I'm going to put a multiply the top and bottom over here by a 2. And what will that turn into? That's going to turn into the square root of 2 plus root 2 divided by 2. And we see that this pattern will just start to replicate itself. So this next term over here is going to be a root 2 plus root 2 over 2. The next term is going to be a root 2 plus root 2 plus root 2 all over 2. And this just keeps going on and on and on forever. So these nested square roots move on. And so we have developed an infinite product formula for 2 over pi. Thank you very much.